The battle against the Saiyans has been a fierce one. Many lives have been lost, including the self-redeeming sacrifice of the former Demon King, Piccolo. Goku has stepped up to take over the fight from here, and after beating Nappa, he faces the Saiyan Prince, Vegeta. Goku pushes his body to its limits with a Kaioken times four Kamehameha, but that forces Vegeta to take drastic measures, an artificial moon that lowers Vegeta's own base power, but in turn grants him access to the Ozaru form at will. In the original story, this is where things Things would begin to go wrong for Goku, but something different happens here. Back when Goku was a child, there were moments where he'd tap into his own hidden potential, and the manga visualized this as him accessing the power of the Ozaru in his base form. This experience leads Goku to a revelation once he realizes that he was the monster who comes out in the full moon. Utilizing the Ozaru power from his childhood in a new way, Goku accesses the Ikari form, or wrathful form in the dub. The power of the Ozaru without the sluggish movements of the great ape body itself. This new form throws Vegeta off for a moment. Something like this resembles the Super Saiyan of legend, but that can't be Kakarot. Vegeta goes to attack Goku, and he would have a massive power advantage had it not been for the damage he took and the creation of the artificial moon. At this point, Vegeta should only be slightly stronger than Goku base to base, which means the Ozaru form and the Ikari form would only exemplify that gap. This leaves the Ozaru body type as Vegeta Vegeta's only disadvantage since Goku only has the form and not Broly's potential. Krillin and Gohan would still return to the battlefield after sensing both Goku and Vegeta have incredible spikes in their power. When they arrive, they see Goku is only able to outmaneuver Vegeta, but there's no way that'll last forever. Krillin knows that they need to remove Vegeta's tail, and he screams to Goku that's their plan. Quickly, Goku maneuvers behind Vegeta and grabs his tail, pulling it to make a large target for Krillin to cut with the Kienzon. Of course, Vegeta can hear their plan, so while Goku can't use movement to his advantage anymore, Vegeta takes this time to batter Goku, slamming his fist into him in the hopes that he'll let go. Goku holds strong though. Vegeta only hits Goku twice before Krillin can let loose a Kienzon and cuts off Vegeta's tail. Even after being battered, Goku is definitely strong enough to take care of Vegeta now, but his power doesn't hold, and the Ikari form eventually drops off. Vegeta is on the back foot, and Krillin tells Goku to finish it, but Goku just shakes his head. He said it'd be a waste to kill him, so Vegeta is allowed to leave while the three remaining fighters mourn and contemplate what to do next. Of course, Krillin recommends going to Namek, and Goku would ask that the trip not be rushed, so instead of taking Kami's ship, the three will take the Capsule Corp ship, but this ship takes over a month to build. This does mean that Bulma doesn't have to join them on the journey since the ship is able to pilot itself, so only Goku, Gohan, and Krillin leave for Namek. By the time they arrive, Vegeta and Frieza have been playing their game of cat and mouse for a little while now. Zarbon and Dodoria are dead, and the Ginyu Force are on their way. At this point, Vegeta has a power level of nearly 30,000. Goku would be at 90,000 like in the original, assuming Krillin has less potential to grow than Goku, and Gohan has more potential to grow than Goku, we can put Krillin comfortably around a power level of 17,000, while Gohan would be closer to 40,000. Yes, this does make Gohan stronger than Vegeta upon arrival, and that makes sense considering this arc is used in the original to change Vegeta's perspective on training as well as taking Gohan's potential into account. Also, Vegeta still abusing Zenkai boosts and refusing training as a viable path to overcome those stronger than himself would mean that he wouldn't have learned the Ikari form before or even on Namek. With every form he obtains in the main series, Vegeta has to train to get it, so I think this is a fair assumption to make. So the stage on Namek is set. Vegeta has managed to steal the five Dragon Balls from Frieza, and he has one he hid near the Namekian village he ransacked, and the final one would still be at the Elder Guru's home since Krillin never took it. This leaves Vegeta one Dragon Ball short, Frieza waiting on the Ginyu Force for new scouters, and the fighters from Earth having a choice to make. Do they go after the large collection of Dragon Balls, or do they go for the Dragon Ball that's on its own? The key signature near the group of Dragon Balls is clearly Vegeta's, someone they didn't expect to run into again so soon, but he was after the Dragon Balls on Earth as well, so they trust it's actually him. The lone Dragon Ball, on the other hand, has two key signatures that are reminiscent of Piccolo and Kami. Thinking they have the chance to save some Namekians, the three head to that Dragon Ball first. Before they head off, Krillin advises they keep their power lowered to avoid detection on Vegeta's scouter. That's when King Kai enters their minds to tell them that the others have arrived on his planet. Goku is happy to hear the good news, but then he tells King Kai that they've run into some trouble on planet Namek. Vegeta is here 
collecting the Dragon Balls as well, but that's not the only thing bothering Goku. There's someone else with a malicious presence and a vicious power currently on the planet. King Kai audibly gulps and checks the planet quickly, hoping he's wrong, but he isn't. Frieza is on Namek, and even with Goku's training, he's no match for the Emperor of the Universe. Goku lies and promises to avoid a fight with Frieza, so King Kai also adds that the Scouters have been destroyed, so they are free to move as quickly as they want, so they do. Of course, Vegeta knows how to sense Ki now, so this doesn't go as well as they'd hoped, but Vegeta knows better than to approach. He can tell the power he's sensing is far beyond himself. There are only three, or he'd assume it was the Ginyu Force. For now, he chooses to to sit back and observe. When they arrive at the Grand Elder's home, he reads Goku's mind, learns of Kami, Piccolo, and their righteous motives for collecting the Dragon Balls. The Grand Elder then unlocks all their latent potentials. It'll take time to fully draw out, but for Goku, this should be a Zenkai equivalent, so he gets a power level of 3 million. Krillin gets around 50 times stronger from this power up in the original, so it should put him at, and I'm not kidding, 850,000. Finally, Gohan got a boost of around 100 times in the original, which would put him at a power level of 4 million. And that should make sense to you, considering this power up is based off of potential first and foremost. Very notably, they don't have access to this power right away. It unlocks over time, so it'll be a little bit before they get the full effect. However, even the initial boost is nothing to look down at, so they are definitely more than prepared for what's to come, or might even already be here the Ginyu Force. While they were getting their powers unlocked and learning everything they needed to use the Dragon Balls from Guru, the Ginyu Force landed, equipped with scouters, and hunted down Vegeta. Goku finally senses the large power levels that have appeared and that Vegeta's power is dwindling. This could be bad. Guru instructs Nail to go with them so they may make their wishes, and Nail agrees. When they arrive at the battlefield, Vegeta is on the brink of death. He had hidden his Dragon Balls before the Ginyus arrived, so they haven't taken them to freeze a ship, and Ginyu is still still there. Goku goes to take out Ginyu directly while Gohan and Krillin fight Jason Birder. Nail challenges Raccoon and the fighting commences. Goku is just far too strong for Ginyu, so he's able to incapacitate him without killing him. The same goes for Jason Birder, who are easily beaten by Krillin and Gohan. Nail struggles with Raccoon since they are at similar powers, but once the other fighters are finished, they help him finish the fight. Vegeta had already killed Goldo before they arrived, so with that, the Ginyu Force has been defeated. After the Ginyu Force is beaten, the sky turns dark, which shocks Frieza since Namek has no night. Frieza can see on his scouter that the Ginyu Force's power levels have dropped to practically nothing, and in a rage, he flies over to the other power readings where they were last seen. Whatever is going on, he needs to secure the Dragon Balls immediately. Krillin, Gohan, and Nail take care of the wishes while Goku goes over to Vegeta and gives the Saiyan Prince a Senzu, barely saving his life. Vegeta gets a massive Zenkai, but he can't compete with Goku and Gohan at all. He's finally seeing the merits of training as he's seeing his own genetic limits. Before Frieza arrives, Piccolo is revived and brought to planet Namek, but since Nail made the wish and not Dende, he knew to bring Piccolo directly to them rather than a random location on the planet. While they were wishing for Piccolo to be brought to planet Namek, Vegeta killed the remaining Ginyu Force members and spit on Goku's mercy. This was no time to be leaving loose ends, especially when Goku and Vegeta began to sense an incredible power drawing near. Frieza is closing in on them right as Piccolo appears next to Gohan and Krillin. Before they can decide what to use their third wish on, Frieza arrives and sends a beam through Nail. He knows the Namekian will be useful for getting his final wish, so he didn't kill him, but he won't allow Nail to make another wish. Frieza then aims for Piccolo, ready to kill him, but Vegeta jumps in instead. While first form Frieza and Vegeta fight, the sky returns to normal. Purunga disappears, and the dragon Dragon Balls turn to stone. The fight lasted long enough to stall till Guru's death. Piccolo rushes over to Nail and tells him that he'll see if Goku has another Senzu, but Nail shakes his head. Nail tells Piccolo that the only way for their people to be avenged would have been to come to Namek as one with his other half or to merge right now. The power won't be as great as his true Super Namekian self, but it will be more than enough to handle Frieza. So Nail and Piccolo merge. With a power level of over 1 million, Piccolo is ready just in time to face Frieza, who's transforming into his second form, a fight reminiscent of the original story's battle. Goku is 
standing back, allowing the others to fight since this is their battle, though he's ready to jump in if he's needed. That's when Frieza begins to transform into his third form. Piccolo and Vegeta try to go after him while he's transforming, but as we know with other transformations in the series, once it starts, it's too late. Piccolo and Vegeta are both blasted away. Piccolo being stronger is able to brace the attack at least a little bit, but Vegeta has a hole blasted through him, and he's not going to make it at this rate. There's one Senzu left, and he asks Goku to give it to him. With one more Zenkai, he very well might become the Super Saiyan. Goku doesn't want to use his last Senzu so soon, but he also doesn't want to let Vegeta die. Reluctantly, he accepts, but Goku tells him if anything goes wrong, he's stepping in. Vegeta smirks and says that won't be necessary. Vegeta gets in between Piccolo and Frieza and tells Piccolo to back off. This fight has already surpassed him. Piccolo scoffs, but he knows that Vegeta is right and he can't risk Earth's Dragon Balls anymore, so he backs down. Vegeta is able to beat down Frieza's third form, and Goku thinks Vegeta might actually get the revenge he's looking for, but that's when power begins to well up inside of Frieza. Goku screams to Vegeta to back down now, but Vegeta just laughs and says no one can beat him now that he's become a Super Saiyan. Now Goku is angry. He didn't give Vegeta the last Senzu just to throw his life away. As Goku flies up to stop Vegeta from doing something stupid, the dust settles on Frieza's transformation and final form Frieza is revealed, quickly piercing Vegeta's chest with a beam and putting the Saiyan Prince back on the brink of death. Goku quickly flies over to where Vegeta is and looks over to Frieza. He transforms into his Ikari form and prepares for battle. Vegeta can't speak, but he can see it now. What he saw before on Earth, but tried to deny. Goku is the Super Saiyan, and he will face down Frieza for all the Saiyans who died before him. As Frieza begins to approach, Vegeta draws his final breath. Frieza and Goku clash. With a power level of 30 million, Goku puts up a decent fight, but final form Frieza at 50% power is still double Goku's strength. No matter what he does, the Ikari form just isn't enough, so he has to resort to trying a Kyle Ken times 20, which requires him to go back to base form. Of course, that doesn't work either, and he's forced to use the spirit bomb, a technique that also cannot be used while transformed. You might see what's happening. The Ikari form, a form with a 10 times multiplier, becomes irrelevant pretty quickly, and because Goku has to drop the form to use the Kaioken times 20 and the spirit bomb, an Ikari Super Saiyan combination like Broly has would just not happen here. So from this point forward, the story realigns with itself. The form would be considered irrelevant and moved on from like the Kaioken was. It's not a form about key control and being calm. Ikari is the word for rage and wrath in Japanese, so mixing it with God Key doesn't seem like an option at all. And even if it was, Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 would still be better. So the form is pretty much abandoned, much like the Ozaru form it's derived from, until we get to the Broly movie, where Broly is the first person in decades to use the form. Vegeta and Goku both recognize it and are shocked to see it again after so long, and they knew this would be different. When combined with Broly's potential, it becomes a far more powerful force. This doesn't actually change the Broly movie, though, but it does change things after the Broly movie. Goku, of course, offers to train Broly, and because of his own control over the Ikari form, he will be more capable as a teacher, and who knows, maybe that's what happens in the next movie to some degree. But only time will tell. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and thank you so very much for watching.